All right. Good evening, everybody. This is it for real. We're going to get going here. Sound check. Make sure we're good. Everything good? All right. Tonight's event, I've been doing these eh, about one a month. Uh, it is scheduled called Biggest Mistakes. What a title, huh? Wasn't sure what to title it. Did you like the description on the invite? <laughs> Just want to see if anybody even really uh, read those or not. Let's uh, get right underway. I do plan on this lasting an hour. I... Somebody has no sound. <laughs> I always love that one. Or log in again, fine. Tonight is going to be kind of a hodgepodge of things. I uh, hope you enjoy it. I always try and give you some good information whenever I talk. I've been doing a talk like this about once a month. I don't have it like formally every month. It just kind of when I have something to talk about, I, uh, I throw it out there. This was, you know, scheduled. I sent an invite maybe, I don't know, three days ago, was it? Sunday? I'm not sure. Um, but it was scheduled quite a while back. Uh, that calendar goes out, I think, through May right now, and it's it's fairly accurate. I usually put this out about two, three weeks ahead of time when I put it on the calendar. So always feel free to check there and stay updated with what we have going on here at DTS, okay? So I do plan on ending right at 6, so everybody can, you know, plan their night when we do these. So I'm going to get going here right away. You saw the slide here. I'm just going to breeze over that. Nobody cares about that. Here's some nice topics. Mistakes is the general title. Um, biggest mistakes is going to be mistakes in getting ready to trade or invest for yourself. Mistakes in looking at charts. Mistakes starting out. And mistakes with money. All these four topics, I've been doing this a while. I know that all of you are going to be interested in the second one the most. I'll be talking for the most about the second and third one. The first one is pretty quick. The last one is very important, but it also is fairly quick. It's really one concept, and I, I happen to have a prior event I did on that one topic, so I'll refer you to that so those won't take long. And for the one about charts, um, I hope you're not disappointed. It's going to be a little bit more general of a discussion, yet I think critically important. To me, it's one of those things like I like to say if I had you know five fingers, which I do, to hold out for the most important things about trading properly, the discussion uh, about charts is going to be one of those things because I think it's something that people um, don't get right and prevent them from learning how to trade. And this is about real substantive stuff. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you have to get an education and all that good stuff. I mean, this is about real substantive stuff, assuming that you're going to get, you know, to, to learn the practice that you're about to do. So there's our four topics. Let's uh, let's get going. Just in general, trading, investing for yourself can be, you know, one of the greatest things out there. Nothing can be better. If you're looking to do it long term for yourself, you know, invest your, your long term funds. You have a different job or you're retired. Doing it for yourself can be great. Why can it be great? Well, believe it or not, the, the pros or at least the pros that want to manage your money aren't all that good at it. I have been saying for years that 85% of mutual funds do not beat the market. I thought recently, a few months ago, I would check that out and verify it since I hadn't looked it up in a while. And I was wrong. It is actually closer to 92, 93% these days of the funds don't beat the market. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. It could be they're not that good. I, I do know one of the reasons, though, is that somebody tell me, I want to get you guys a little bit involved. Why isn't that? Why is it that a big fund, even if some, even somebody running it, that's, let's say they're really pretty good, what what's the big disadvantage that a big fund has that you and I don't have? Well, at least I don't have it, and most of you don't have it. Maybe one or two of you have it. <laughs> yeah, you, you're saying volume, uh, right? That that's true too, Trader Jeff. Um, but but specifically, um, we can be more nimble, right? We can be nimble. We can divest our entire portfolio in one morning if we want to. We can sell any stock in total if we want to. Funds can't do that. You know, you, you got you got 
a few billion dollars in the market, you just can't turn around and sell it, right? And the other things you're saying are true also, um, that they have to be invested. In other words, they, they, they are required by their laws to have a certain amount of money, their, their own bylaws, I don't mean <laughs> legal laws, but they're required to have certain amounts invested at certain times, and there's times they have to be invested. You always have the ability to sit back and say, hey, you know, let's, let's, let's wait for a little better time here right now. Um, Funds can't be nimble even if they get it right. If you're talking shorter term, if you want to day trade to earn income, again, no better job in the world as long as you make money doing it. This is the area where, you know, I'm going to talk about success rates for a second here. You hear a lot of talk about success rates. Um, you hear a lot of talk that, you know, 90% of, of traders fail. And I'll say it's probably true. I really don't know. But a lot of it comes down to all kinds of definitions. What do you mean by a trader? Do you mean, you know, I consider a trader anybody who, who manages by charts and does it for themselves. So you could be a trader in holding things for years. You're still a long-term trader. But also, what does it mean to be successful? I mean, if you're long-term, are you successful if you're above zero? Are you successful if you beat the market? If you're day trading, are you successful if you make money at all? Are you successful if you... Uh, get extra income or you know w what is the definition of successful I'm, I'm not sure I think I know the definition of unsuccessful you, you blow out your account or you lose a lot of money but I'm not I'm not really sure and I don't know the numbers I don't pretend to I know that it is something that not uh, everybody can do or should do I think more people are inclined to be successful long term because there's less emotions involved I think people can learn to, to manage their own money I think it's something they can be taught to do um, fairly quickly because you always have that overnight break kind of where you have time to think about things. When you're day trading, people tend to make rash decisions that are usually the wrong decision. But as a day trader, you know, I think there's a lower success rate and there's a good reason for that. There's a lot more emotion involved and there's also, you know, a little bit of a hyped up speed thing going on. And when people realize and experience the fact, you know, I, I think every trader, even if they fail, experiences the, the days or the trades where they make more money on in a couple hours than they did in their whole week in a prior job. And it, it messes with you in some ways. And of course, then there's some of the problems I want to talk about tonight is about what people do to actually prepare to be a trader and what it is that they have to go through to really fully understand things. It's not rocket science, but it's also a little more difficult than making a pizza for yourself. Biggest mistake number one, biggest mistakes in getting ready. And again, this would be a, a small topic here, but it, it's pretty much summed up by just saying start off slow. The worst email I ever had, one of the worst emails I ever had in my life was a guy, you know, it was a while back, um, not, not recently with just DTS, but a while back, that wrote me and said, Paul, I just joined the room that you run. Uh, I'm going to be starting Monday. I think it was over the weekend. He said, I, um, I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Um, and I also, I, I'm sorry, he wasn't in the room. He said, I'm, I'm taking your classes next weekend. It, it was like a week ahead of time. He said, I quit my job this week and I need to be making money, money by the end of the month to replace my income. You know, that's, that's the exact issue I'm attacking here is that you, you can't do that. Nobody can do that. You, you, you can't have that pressure on you. It will take you some time to turn a profit. And I'm quite honest. I mean, not everybody can. Some people are just just caught up. Yeah, really, no stress at all. Yeah, I just need to. I just, I just need you to teach me the seminar and then put it to use and be making money in three weeks and making more money than wasn't my job. That's all I need to do. You know, piece of cake. Um, but there are a lot of people that have a really great situation where they are either working some kind of. I, I, I the people in the room with me, some of them I know. Typically, there's this weird number that always works out. About 75% of the people uh, are logged in max any day out of the total subscribers. And that's because there are some people that are consultants and they, and they go work a job for two, three weeks. They come back and trade for two, three weeks. There are some people that are, uh, there's some people that are full-time trading because that's what they do. There are some people that um, are able to, to work the mornings or to, to trade the mornings and they go to a job or a part-time job in the afternoons. There's some people that work on schedules and they work Thursday through Sunday and they trade the other three days. 
Uh, but a lot of people are the ones that are learning to trade. And of course, a lot of people, this is all they do is they just trade the morning or trade the afternoon. That's all they have to do. But when you're starting off and learning, I think it's important to have your income provided for you during the time that you're learning. And if that's because you have it saved and put away, that's great. But just don't come to the market on day one and expect that you're going to be making your income on day two because it doesn't work that way. It's a failure for success. For That's the uh, recipe for failure. Excuse me. Uh, I try to be very real when I talk to you guys, not blow any smoke, because this is something that is doable. You can be shown how to do it, but it is not quite as easy as I think most people make it out to be. There are certain things you have to do. So don't leave the income stream you have until you can until you can prove you can replace the money. Even if you're following a room, you still have to prove that you can follow the room. A lot of people can't do that. They try to, and yet they take off on their own trades. They manage their own way. And uh, just prove that you can replace the income before you get rid of your income. Mistakes in getting ready, page two. We're still on mistakes in getting ready, which is the first of the four categories. Trading is not great if you're not ready for it. You need to learn what you're doing. Pay someone to teach you or teach yourself, but learn. There is stuff to learn. This is one of these things, the, fav the favorite expression of mine is you, you don't know what it is you don't know. There are incredible things you can learn when it comes to reading and charts and technical analysis. However you learn it, learn it. Again, my goal here is not to tell you to take anything. It's to simply say that there is learning to be done and make sure you can do it. The best thing in the world is if you know a successful trader is to do anything that you can to go live with a guy for a month, for two months. Um, do anything he asks you. Pay him anything you want. Um, you know, cut his grass and make his meals, whatever you need. But, but if you have that opportunity, do that. That's the best thing you can do. It takes some seasoning. It's not just a matter of learning it. You cannot sit down in a weekend and learn how to trade and trade the next week. It, it, I can't stress enough, it just doesn't happen that way. You need seasoning. If I, if I teach you, allow six to nine months on average. Um, some are quicker, some are slower. Six to nine months would allow you to retake the seminars three to four times. And you know what? That's what you need. You need to retake things three to four times. You guys believe that? Do you agree with that? Right, I'm going to give you some estimates. The, the, the first time you take a seminar on new material, and this, this is a very well-documented fact, how much do you retain? The first time, if you're a very smart person, and if I'm an incredible teacher, which I am, by the way, <laughs> just as much as you are very smart people, you retain 15%, right? Now, the rest, I never heard any stats, but I'm going to make some up for you. Uh, I think the second time you get in the 40 to 50% category, the third time you get up to 75%, and then it gets tougher, and the fourth time you get up to 80, 85%. I'm making those numbers up. I don't know what they are, but that's about what I would say. And I, I would be scared if anybody tried to trade knowing 75% of what I know. And I know a lot. I know a lot of worthless stuff. I, I could sit here and I, I, could, I could put five seminars together on stuff that would blow you away that you would never use. <laughs> you never make any money from it. But it just, you know, I, I would be scared if anybody out in the market. So that's why it scares me when somebody takes a class or listens to a tape recording or whatever uh, and, or, or, or an online video on things they can trade. You, you, just, you just can't. So, again, the whole point of this slide is just to say allow some time. It is learnable. It's doable. But you have to take good classes from someone who knows what they're doing and have it repeated to you, repeated to you, repeated to you. It has to be repeated to you. And then you have to have some follow-up process. When you take trades, there's a huge disconnect often between what you see in a classroom and then what you actually do when you're in the marketplace. And so many times people, they see and they read and they understand A plus B equals C. They go out in the marketplace and they're doing D plus E equals QXZ. And they don't, they're not even close to what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's something. It's, it's all over my website, Glenn. You know, I, I've, I've been so happy being off on my own. You know, I, I've, had a great, I've had a great career doing this, and I've, I've enjoyed it. But um, as I think I've told most of you, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to retire in about four years. I, I'm going to update you in two years. I, I just tell people that up front because I'm not taking lifetime subscriptions or any of that stuff. But, you know, the problem with bigger companies are that you have to keep – you have to keep providing more material to sell is what it comes down to. And I'm, I'm not into that. I don't care if stuff, people buy stuff or not. I'm having fun. And if you want to learn from me, you can learn from me. And, you know, like the first slide said, if you want to learn, there, there's one very low price and you get seminars, repeats on seminars, the practical application review day, 
scanning sessions, uh, time with me. Some of you in the room have asked me too many questions, and I, instead of saying, leave me alone, I've pulled you into a chat room, right? Some of you are probably here that I've said, hey, let's go in the chat room, look at some live charts, and let's get, let's get through this, because let's get through these bad trades you did or whatever it is, because that is what you need. So, but that, again, let's, let's move on, because this is, you know, this is kind of boring stuff to some of you I know. Here's looking at charts, mistakes and looking at charts. Um, Obviously, I could probably fill up 30 slides in mistakes and looking at charts, and I could fill up 25 of them just from mistakes I probably made looking at charts in the beginning. Oh, wait a minute. I have some notes here I wrote to myself. Uh, yeah, I don't have to say that. That's okay. Okay. Charts. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not talking about the failure to learn how to read charts. I'm saying you, you've got a good education. You know what you're doing. You are taught by the best and you know charts. You still have problems sometimes. Here, here are just some of the list of things that can mess people up in my experience. Uh, multiple time frame coordination. In other words, taking, I'm, I'm going to go into a couple of these in detail, but obviously I can't go into all these in detail or we'd be here for 12 or 15 hours. Multiple time frame coordination. In other words, you're 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 seeing a certain time frame. You're, you're playing like I like to say the the ripple in the ocean, but you're playing it right into the big tidal wave that's coming into you. Um, you're you're playing a certain pattern that may be somewhat valid, but it is playing right against a bigger pattern. That's a problem for a lot of people. Understanding what the time frame of reference is, parent time frames, proper use of zooming down time frames. Um, again, you, most of you probably know those terms. Um, if you don't, again, I'm not going to dwell on that a lot, but the, these to me are big issues in that you could be right about the concept, but you could be a mile off in your timing sometimes. Uh, market timing, the use or non-use of it as it is sometimes, um, and how important that can be. Um, understanding extended versus the move being over. Uh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one for a good trader to understand sometimes. People sometimes shorting patterns because they feel they can't go any higher and yet they've barely begun their move. And conversely, people playing patterns to go higher when clearly they've exhausted themselves and they're done. Improper use of moving averages or technical indicators. Again, just going by common things I see in email or from, from newer people is, is relying on fictitious things in trading. Things that really, really don't make things move at all. Simply commenting on aspects of a chart to justify a desired outcome rather than objectively looking for strategy. And that's a lot of words there, but it's probably one of the most common things. And this is one of these, you know, anywhere along the way, if I, I say something that really rings the bell with you, just type a little light bulb or, you know, say, yeah, I get that or whatever. But I want to explain this one a little bit because it's probably one of the most common things. Some of you will, to, to, to kind of teach themselves what they will do is they'll, they'll look at charts at the end of the day. <laughs> Glenn, I didn't even say it yet. They'll look at charts at the end of the day, and they'll find the big movers for the day, right? They'll find the ones, you know, the top 30 things that are up the most for the day, big green bars in the chart. And then what they do is they go back, and they look at the aspects of that chart. And then I'll get an email, something like, Paul, this, this, this thing really caught my eye today. Let me see if this is what's going on. And they'll say stuff like, well, the, uh, the daily chart was sitting on the 50-period moving average. Um, the stock on the five minute chart started the day with a big green bar. And then it seemed like it started to move up when the five minute 20 period moving average crossed the five minute 10 period moving average. What do you think about that? Do you, do you guys get the point of, you know, my, my, and by the way, it's almost a word for word email. Do you guys get the point of what I'm saying? And, the email, this, this reverse engineering process, I like to call it. But, but putting together random events that created a big green or a big red bar, but none of those are necessarily the cause, right? Do you understand what I'm saying, everybody? And or if you, know, if you felt you've ever been guilty, that give me some details. But yeah, exactly, Trader Jeff. I didn't want to go there. But yeah, correlations versus causation. I mean... Sure, a stock went up and all these things happened. But the thing is, can you go find that pattern for me tomorrow? 
Well, right, and that was the wording here, exactly, to justify, you know, you know the stock moved up already, so you find things to justify why it moved up, which is really, it's just completely backwards from saying, here are the things that I know I need to look for to find stocks that are more likely to move, and here's the criteria I need once I find those to what I like to call trigger the move. Um, and there's just such a big difference, and you, you can't, well, I shouldn't say that you, you can reverse engineer trading, but it would take a very smart person a, a good number of years, I would guess. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating either because there's just so many uh, combinations and permutations that could happen that it's, it's very, very difficult to actually find, you know, common threads on things. Some top things, more things, according to me, this is according to me, by the way, this is everything I say is <laughs> according to me, not out of a book anymore. Following, the two times, the only two times you didn't have an edge, or mistake would be, excuse me, not following, it should say the two times. Let me make that clear in case somebody's barely staying awake out there. Not following. The two times you have an edge. The two times you have an edge are following trends and when you have shock value of some kind. I've done prior talks about that. Um, and again, I, I could probably justify an awful lot of things following those two categories, but they should. Misunderstanding reward to risk concepts. I think this hurts traders a lot. The foolish, the um, I think the incorrect teaching that you must have, you know, X reward to risk, or you cannot take that trade. Um, the 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 real issues with reward to risk go so far beyond that. It's it's incredible. Um, patience. How about that for a simple one word that probably has killed more trading careers than anything else? How about patience? Going through all the trouble to learn the charts, to learn what you want to look for, to, to scan, to find what it is you want to wait for, and then to be sitting there and then just not have the patience to wait for what it is you want to wait for, right? It is probably one of the top things that, that, that kills traders. I mean, I will wait. I, I'll show you an example today. Um, I, I'll wait all morning or all whatever to wait for the setup that I think is going to happen. Now, I could be wrong about the proper setup. But basically, when I've decided how it is I'm going to play a stock in the morning, um, I will wait for that setup, whatever it is, whatever it takes. And today I waited till noon for something. The one I waited for actually worked to some extent. Some others didn't today. Yeah, well, is patience discipline? Is discipline patience in trading? Well, I guess discipline encompasses more things than patience, right? Discipline encompasses a whole lot of things, but patience is certainly a part of discipline. Yeah, absolutely. So today is an example. We, so should I go to some charts here real quick? Um, oh, t time, uh, timing. Plan the play as a day trader. Now, again, is it, it's true for long-term trading too, but as a day trader, trying to hold a small profit when it's going to... Yeah, that, 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 that also, Gil, is absolutely true. Let me um, talk about what I mean here. Timing plan for the day as a, as a day trader. Let me show you what it was that I was talking about today. This is an example. I'm going to show you examples every trade every day, but there's a very clear one today. I'm going to pull up some charts here real quick and show you real quick something from today. So it was a tricky day in the sense that you should see charts up here right now. You got charts? Okay. Um, as, as a day trader, for sure, I always believe in, first of all, understanding the map of the market that day, the plan for the market. Now, some trades, by definition, I don't need the market. So I don't care, but some of them I do. So I always want to have the market kind of planned out what I think is going to happen, how it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. So today the plan was very simply this um, going into today. Like this is today, of course, you know, here's in case you can't see it. Here's the line that started today. We had we broke the intraday uptrend and this was the downtrending 15 minute pivot. There's the hourly chart. And to me, the plan is very simple is you, the way I like to phrase it is you have to stay bearish until proven wrong. So 
the idea was to stay basically bearish today. That doesn't mean I wouldn't take a, a long trade anywhere, anytime. And, and that until we hit some area of some kind, okay? So we open, and the idea was to keep some kind of a bearish bias. Let's go to just go to a five-minute chart real quick so you can see a little better. Now, I have lists of bullish stocks and bearish stocks, and the plan was that when I felt the market either was going to be bullish by, number one, trading over this prior area up here, which was not happening today, or by coming down to a support area. Now, coming down to test the prior day's low at noon, to me, was a good moment in time, I like to call it. And to me, this is what's so important, is that it's not about being right or wrong. And I know some of you may say that's a stupid saying, but it's not. To me, it's one of the truest sayings in trading. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about making money. Um, there, like this trade I, I took, I could have looked back and it could have been the stupidest trade in the world. I had a couple today that were. But the point is that if you are right, this is the exact moment to act. So what I had was when the, when the market did this down here, I, I typed, I was typing at the time in the room. I said, that's the low for the day, right? I, somebody could verify that if you were awake in the room today. I said, that's the low for the day. So what did that mean to me? Well, what it meant to me was that I had a list of bullish stocks that I was looking at. And it meant that that was the time to get one of those bullish stocks long. So I, I turned to um, our blah, 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 blah. I turned to um, NRG. At, at this particular moment in time, I turned to NRG and I looked at NRG, just go to a 15 minute chart. I look at NRG and NRG has this little tight hourly chart trending higher. And while the market fell to yesterday's low, this thing was sitting here like this. See it at 12 o'clock? So I caught it as the market was hitting the low. Let me go to a five minute chart. As the market's hitting the low, guess what? This thing got hit by the market but look at look at the difference let me just scroll over a little bit can you guys see this chart okay so it's, it's right in here is is where do 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 do, do on, on this pullback in here that i got in because if the market had bottom this thing was maintaining an uptrend that's the perfect time to act now people do things wrong in two aspects to me and again we're talking about mistakes to me the biggest mistakes are having no plan for the day whatsoever so you just this is a strong stock so you just get in and then you stop out or I think the bigger problem is that when they have a plan is they wait too much for too much confirmation so you have to know when to act and if you waited for the market to fly guess what you would have got in here and there'd be no profit left right now, this wasn't a great trade. It didn't make a ton of money, but I'm just, it's, it was a perfect example of the concept, though, that I, I, I knew to get in on this dip even. I got in down on the dip down there because it was time with the market. And again, to me, this is that moment in time thing, that if I'm going to be long a stock today, this is the moment to do it. Does that make sense, everyone? Again, this is a concept. I'm, I'm not teaching you like this secret chemical recipe is just a concept and it has to do and by the way I'm not alone in that concept one of Mark Douglas's famous quotes is exactly what what I say all the time he phrases it a little differently but basically you don't or, or maybe we say it exactly the same now but maybe I got it from him. I don't know but you don't that you don't need to be right you need to make money and people worry about make being right or worried all the time now what if the market didn't bounce and kept going lower well, then I might have had a really bad trade. But so many people get caught in this rut where they never make money because they're always waiting for so much confirmation and they get in so late or they're, you know, or they're just jumping in without any kind of signal and, and they're wrong. So you have to hit that happy medium. Where, and, and a lot of that comes simply from, from confidence, I hate to say. We're going to talk about that in a moment as well. <laughs> Mistakes in starting out. Turning to the holy grail when things don't work at first. This is kind of like if you've ever re read the book by Darvis. It's an older book. I think it's called How I Made Two Million in the Market. It's an entertaining book because he starts out relating probably in a way that all of you could relate to him 100%. 
he starts off as a new person saying, well, obviously to conquer the market, you need to understand fundamentals. He goes and he learns fundamentals and gets his head handed to him. And he goes to the next thing, he goes to the next thing, and finally he realizes that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's technical. It's, it's looking what really happens, not what's supposed to happen. But one of the, the things that's in there is the way he kind of refers to it is how I see a lot of people act is that you try something. And every time it doesn't work, you look for the shortcut, the holy grail, we call it. It's, there's got to be some magical indicator, some magical, some secret sauce thing, some, some, some great 30-minute video I can watch, some great formula, uh, you, you know, some great technical indicator, whatever it is. And you, you guys just have to be told there, there is no such thing. I, I'm not the, the smartest guy in the tool shed out there, but... Um, I'm not the dumbest either. If there was something easier to do, I would have done it. I'd be doing it now. I mean, I, I don't like torture, but learning to me, my mantra that I've had the last six months with, with DTS, it's about learning the language of charts. Does that make sense, everyone? Because, because it's what it is. You're learning the language of charts. It's, it's no one thing. There, there is no secret sauce. There is no wonderful, magical thing that happens. It's simply learning and understanding price patterns no different than you would learn, um, uh, you know, a, a foreign language, no different than you would learn how to, um, how to be a doctor or a lawyer or anything else. It's just learning various parts of the big puzzle that go together. This is a bold move by you. <laughs> what does that mean? It only means something to me. Um, somebody recently said to me, I, I had a get together with the seminar students and I wanted to take an evening and go through precise scanning things I look at for day trades. And I decided as a courtesy that I would invite the people in the trading room, even if they weren't part of the seminar group. And one of the people said something to me in an email that resonated with me. And I hope he's not here. If he is, don't say anything because you're anonymous. But he, says, he said to me, boy, getting everybody together to watch you scan, you're going to give away all the secrets. That's really a bold move. So what do I think about that? Let me see if that person's here so I can see how <laughs> precise I can talk about that. What do, you, what, what do you think I think about that? Gee, Paul, it's really nice of you in a sense, but you're you're getting everyone together and you're giving a, you're going to give away all the secrets. That's really a bold move by you. What do I think about that? True. If someone can pick it up and use it, great. And, you know, Gal, I mean, for those of you that, you know, have known me a little better, I mean, that's what I'm all about right now. I'm, I really would like to just try and help as many people learn this as they can. If you don't want to, it's fine. You know, I don't, I don't care. And a lot of people know it already well enough. Um, but there's just a lot of things that comment that, that kind of uh, uh, bothers me. I mean, number one, sure. I mean, I, I, I show people stuff all the time, all that I can. And I feel bad in a way because I think in a way it's a disservice, right? Hey, Jason, there's, there's two ways I could take what you just said there. I'm not really sure which way you meant it. I'm going to assume it's, it's the nice. I think I know what you mean, assuming you're being nice. I think I know what you mean. Um, yeah, I mean, here, here's the point. But number one, that the attitude that somebody thinks that you could listen to a one-hour presentation and give away the secret sauce is what bothers me. I mean, it's just it, it doesn't work that way. I mean, yes, I was going over chart patterns I like, but to understand the chart patterns I like, you have to have that background and knowledge of what it is that, that I go through. It's every, every word, every concept has, has, you know, multiple hours or, you know, of experience and, and training and background. It's, it's not like you just pick it up. I'm sure we all get the easy concepts of, oh, gee, here's a consolidation. You're playing over that. You're doing this. But, you know, there's so many things that come together to make a trade worthy to me. Like I like I tell you guys, I, I, I look at... Out of a thousand stocks that I'll look at, I, I pick up about 20 symbols to look at. So obviously there's something more than just some of the basic stuff out there that makes me interested. But um, 
it says in there too, it gets into the next one about like trade of the week videos, kind of a disservice in the way. I, I mean, I like to share whatever I can when I can. But it always worries me that somebody thinks that, that, gee, this is the secret sauce and this is and this is it. And all I have to know is this concept and I'm good to go. And uh, maybe I overemphasize it too much, but, I, you know, I, I leave all the trade of the week videos out there. I mean, I have there's probably 30 of them out there or whatever there are if you go and look on the site. Um, and you're free to go look at those, by the way. And for those of you who don't know, I have a getting to be a fairly extensive free stuff page. I still want to add some more um, educational videos, which I will. But, um, you know, if you just go to the website and there's a whole bunch of trade of the week videos there. A lot of people find very entertaining and they try and learn from them and, and that's great. And I got a lot of questions, but where I feel bad sometimes is that somebody will send me um, a, a trade they did and said, you know, Paul, I, I, I watched your trade of the week video from, you know, uh, Adobe in, in November and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I did the same trade, but it didn't work for some reason. What happened? And they're, you know, and of course, I'm looking at the trade thinking, what are you doing? I mean, that's that's not Adobe. That's not even close to the concept. The uh, nothing is the same. But you know, again, I don't know what people are looking at. So, but again, I just want to want to stress to you that um, a lot of people, especially as day traders, don't don't make it doing this. And you have to be a little different. You have to think a little different. And you have to be um, not only patient, but you have to understand that it's something that just takes a little bit of, um, I lost the word, but it's something that takes just a little bit of, of time, not just to learn, but to get the seasoning to really fully understand it. Uh, I'm not trying to talk you out of learning anything if you're still learning. I, I just want you to understand that it, it is something that takes more than a couple of weeks. Why will it take six to nine months? Well, I explained part of it already because you learn maybe 15% and then 40 and then 60 and then 80 or whatever it is, but it's going to take you multiple repetitions of material to understand it. And it's not just learning the material. I mean, you could argue that you could take and take notes and just keep repeating it to yourself until you memorize the whole course, the, all, all three courses, you can memorize whatever you want to, but would you be successful then? What if you didn't memorize everything? What if you memorized that just the whole the whole thing from top from top to bottom? So you you could literally take the words out of my mouth as I speak at a summer. Would you still? Yeah. Again, it, it, it's not any different than saying, OK, I just read all the medical books and I know how to do a heart operation. Would you want that person to do your heart operation? <laughs> the answer is no, I really wouldn't want him to do that, you know, because yeah, there's the practical understanding, but there's the real world experience. We call that seasoning. And is getting the notions in your head to match the real charts. One of the things I do in class is, you know, I, I, we go through like some PowerPoint stuff to learn theoretically how it is. And I say, you know what, this really isn't hard to learn. But what you have to do is you have to take this slide. It's a PowerPoint slide. And then I show the market, a real market slide and say, or a real chart and say, you have to understand that this is this. This is stage one, two, three and four in real life. That's how it looks. That's as good as it gets. And you have to be able to synthesize those two things. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah, Herman has been at every seminar since I started DTS, and he uh, he lets me know if I leave something out. <laughs> does, does that does that make sense, though, guys? What I'm saying that just the difference between the theoretical and real application is is what has to be bridged, right? There's there's nothing like looking at a slide in education. I don't care how well you know or how well it's taught to you, but you have to take that and apply it. You see, the, the charts every day are different. It's like fingerprints. There's no identical chart of any stock of any market, right? It's just like a fingerprint. So every day is a little different. You can't just say, here's the exact same chart that happened in the summer of 26 or whatever. It just doesn't exist. And even if it did, you couldn't catalog it well enough to ever to do it. So you have to see the pictures of what's happening. And I teach people to look for pictures, for general concepts that come together to form pictures in your mind of what's happening, right? Right, right, too, Carmen. True. Okay. So your, your, your goal is not unlike it is in any other endeavor, is to learn the basics and to form 
a, a concept, a picture. It's it's like learning to golf. You could read all the manuals you want in the world and all the instruction things and look at all the videos you want. Um, I don't care if you study for three years. You're not going to go out and hit the ball like Tiger Woods if it's the first time you swing a club. And I know this is physical, so it's a little different application, but it's really not. It's still taking mental knowledge and, and applying it to a, a real-time environment. So that's why. And um, the, the, the procedure to do it is to you know, take the courses, understand, and go study the market some more. You should really take the first a few weeks just paper trading, studying charts, studying what you learned, um, getting to know things. And, and then sometime toward the end of, of that first three, four weeks to start writing uh, just a real general plan of what it is you want to do in the market. And I've been through this in the slides. You know, I do um, an introduction to mastering technical analysis class that you were all invited to that goes through the procedure you should actually do. And you're, you'll all be invited to that too. It's actually coming up um, well, we're coming into it pretty soon. When's it going to be? Let me look real quick. By, by the way, fr Friday, I'm doing another event you're all invited to. We're doing uh, the market letter review. Um, and you'll, um, members will get an invite to that. So if you're not a member, make sure you do um, sign up to be a, a free member. Um, April 6th. Yeah, April 6th is the little half day class I do that everyone can attend. And I talk a lot about there about exactly the procedures to go through to learn this. Who does it apply to? Um, brand new people? Well, if you're not making money, it applies to you. Hey, Paul, Paul, I knew your name. Um, I thought you, I thought you had contact me at DTS though. How you doing, Paul? I thought I heard from you at DTS. I mean, I just saw your name go through today, and I was, um, I thought you had emailed me or something since the old pristine days, but welcome anyhow. If you have a coach and can trade, say, six, nine months, otherwise, yeah, you're, you, you, you're right, Gil. Um, that would be the ideal thing, is, is to have a coach, and I'm, I'm trying to, oh, I know Paul Jones. <laughs> I know you, but anyways, I'm, I, I apologize. I do remember your name though very well. Um, and, and, you know, to some extent, I'm, I'm I'm trying to offer that as much as I can to people to, um, you know, be as close to that as I possibly can. But anyways, um, continuing on. Here's a here's a famous question about experience. How do you get good judgment in trading? Answer, experience. How do you get good experience? Um, answer, bad judgment. It, it, it's funny, but it's not funny. There are, it's really a circular process. And, and one time I, I spit this out really well, and I don't think I can do it again. But the whole thing, it, you know, so I get asked a lot, where, where do you get the confidence to take the trade to hit the button? I, I mean, where, where do you get over the fear? How do you get over the fear of staying in a trade or, or getting into a trade? And my answer is always easy, it's confidence. Or do you get confidence? We well, get confidence from being, you know, successful. Well, how do you get to be successful without? <laughs> well, the answer is simple. Anybody know the answer? To, to learn to trade, you need confidence. To be confident, you have to trade well. What's the answer? There is an answer. It, it has to do with something I just alluded to. But what, what's the answer? And it's the answer for a lot of you listening to me if you're not making money. Yeah, another saying is that, you know, um, well, yeah, learning from your mistakes, uh, that, that's true. Um, and that's where a lot of people miss the boat as well because they just sweep their mistakes under the carpet. They don't ever learn from them. Um, part of the issue is that you have to have the knowledge to learn from your mistakes, right? And that's an issue for a lot of new people is if they take a class, take a course, they take a trade trade doesn't go well, is it a good trade that just didn't work or is it a bad trade? And that's something that's hard for people to answer. You learn more from doing wrong than doing right. Well, here's, here's the little procedure that has to happen. It has to do with starting off with paper trading and trading really light shares initially. Um, learn, getting your mistakes out of the way without a big cost to you so it doesn't hurt you. And then as you start to trade well, you get confidence. You get confidence making money, even if you're making $5 a trade. You get confidence. And that confidence gives you the ability to start 
trading better and then upping the amount you make, which gives you more confidence. You have to get that upward cycle going. And the, the problem is, well, the problem is what we're going to talk about in the last slide or two. And actually, well, if we have time, I was going to go back to the chart slides. L let me know if, if I have a couple of minutes left. Um, let me know if on the, the chart thing, if there's anything else on there you want to talk about in more detail. Um, I, I talk about a couple of them in detail, but you know, let me know on that slide that if there is. But I, I, let me get through what I have, and then we'll see if we have a couple minutes for that. Um, Mistakes with money, and that's what I just want to start talking about. There are many, um, but these are learned or common sense. In other words, mistakes with money people should be able to get over because they're not difficult to overcome. They're just following some rules. But here is what I feel kills so many people. And again, even if you get everything else right up to this point, you get over the other mistakes about starting off and about learning and um, you get through everything else. Here's where I find people fall short sometimes, and this is amazing to me. I'm back. It's it's amazing enough that I actually did um, an event about it a couple times back. And if you didn't see it, again, you can go to the free stuff page, and it's called um, "Well, uh, from Chart Reader to Trader Investor." And what it talks a lot about is is this problem: is that almost everybody, first of all, starts off too big and then never gets big enough, talking about in the amount that they risk. See, you, you need to literally start off with nothing or $5. I don't care how much money you have, how good you think you are, how smart you are, or anything else, because you need to get the confidence trading and earn the right to trade $10, $20, $50. Does everybody understand that? It's, you know, everybody. There, there, there's no other real way to do it. I mean, so many people that start saying, oh, well, I'll just start off with a couple hundred bucks. Okay, well, when you're down $10,000, starting off with a couple hundred bucks is not the right idea. Why can't you just prove you know what you're doing? Why, why can't you do that? Why can nobody do that? Nobody does this. Why can nobody just prove that you can make money for two weeks with $5 on the line? Why can't you do that? And then here's the second problem. And I've had so many people that I think have helped a lot with this. Um, and actually, this story goes back years ago. I used to uh, privately mentor people. I did 100, actually 99 people I privately mentored a long time ago. And, and one of the guys, I remember him emailing me before we got together in person, and, and he had this issue that he didn't know why he was just breaking even. And he didn't want to risk more money because he wasn't making money. And he had a batting average of uh, 61 or 62 percent and a sharp ratio is either 1.6 or 1.8 now without going into the numbers that's really good trading that's just great so i'm thinking okay this guy is doing his numbers wrong because he'd be killing it well he wasn't doing his numbers wrong his problem was he was risking 30 or 40 bucks and that's all he would risk and he was looking at his profit after commissions and expense this is back when commissions were like 17 bucks or something so he didn't understand that if he would have just risked five hundred dollars a trade and did nothing else different, he'd be he'd be making twice what his job paid him at the time. It's all he had to do. And this is the problem for a lot of people is that and again I listen to the whole other video if you want, but what some people do is and listen carefully because this probably is going to strike about a third of you right on the head, and that is that you feel like you're trading well and you're making some money but you're not making enough and you decide in order to make more money, you're going to trade harder, trade faster, take more trades. So maybe you're risking a hundred bucks a trade or 200 bucks and you make one and a half good trades. You're up 300 bucks, but you need 500. So you take three more trades, but two of them are losers and you get back some of the money because you're pushing the trades. Does that sound familiar to anybody? And all you have to do is to understand the math of it, that if you have the confidence, if you have a good track record, if you're making the money, is just up your risk amount to the point where you make money making one risk unit a day. In other words, if, you're, if you want to risk $500 a trade, then, then you, if you need to make $500 a day, you risk $500 a trade. And some days you make more than one risk unit, some days you may lose. But in general, it's fairly easy to manage averaging that, okay? But you have to, notice the capital letters, you have to have the stats to prove that. 
So it's, it's the two extremes, people starting off way too big and then never getting big enough when they're good, as opposed to starting off super small and then getting big enough to make your living when you can prove you can do it. Just caught in. Okay. Well, the confidence, you know, to do that, the confidence has to come over a period of time. It has to come over, you know, a good, you know, and you have to set the standard up for yourself when you raise risk amounts. But it needs to come over, you know, it depends what your, your rules are. It could be over a couple of weeks of good trading or especially when you get to higher numbers to make sure you're solidly there. Because sometimes people goof up when they start risking more. All right. Let me suggest one other thing to you. And again, if, if, and this is just meant to be helpful. The concept of mental losses costing much more than technical. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, James. Um, if you trade during the day, if you're day trading, and if you're not making money, and this, and this struck me only recently, I haven't even said these words before. And it struck me because I had two, three people with the same things and a couple were in the trading room and one wasn't. But why lose money if you're learning to trade, if you're available to like sit in in the room? Why not come to the trading room, take the trades in the room with, you know, you know, start off the same way, start off with a moderate risk, but then, you know, and increase it, but then use that as your baseline and then start taking your own trades with just a fraction of the risk until you can prove your own trades are adding to the profit, not taking away from the profit because people have this problem sometimes that they'll sit in a room that's making money and they'll lose money because they're using advance and guidance. Now, I've never said this before because I think the goal of everybody should be to be, I have people who have been in the room with me for more than a decade, you know, literally. And they probably do great because they have their own concepts, their own plans, and they listen to my ideas and plans, and they can do the best of both worlds because they're experienced. But if you're new, why are you taking your own concepts over mine and then losing money? You see what I'm saying? Come in, make money, and learn to trade at the same time. This is like some revelation to me to say this. but. I've always been a little against it because I think people should learn to develop their own style, and you should. But when I see people not being able to develop their own style because they're losing, and they're losing because they're doing their own thing, we're in an environment that's not losing, I, I think that doesn't make any sense, right? HR, thank you. Working out very nicely. So my concept to you is if you're available during the day, you know, come, come in the room <laughs> and, and, and mimic things, and then off to the side, start developing your own concepts, but just use less money and track them. And then when you start making more risk units or as many, then you have the right to say, okay, I'm gonna start throwing in my own couple of trades or my own style and or in place of pause and just always track and make sure you're doing better than the room. That's the goal, okay? What do I have on the screen here? It says, and, and, and I was gonna say, the thing about my room, and I think there are people here, they're in the room, and I'm gonna make this statement, I think, it's a very fair statement that I, I've seen or heard of rooms where they may have certain numbers and they may be okay, but nobody could play along. There's, there's a comment out there that somebody said to me once. They said, well, in the blah, blah room, the moderator just got out of the trade before I knew he was in it. You can't, I mean, it, it may be beneficial to you to learn a style and that's great. But if you're trying to copy along, some people can't. I, I think, and people in the room tell me, I think it's a very sta fair statement to say that the vast majority, I'm going to go as far as 95% of the trades that I do, are mimicable in that we talk about them at 9 o'clock in the morning. The watch list I develop at 9 o'clock, I stick with 95% of the time. And I, I give no, notice on the trades as much as possible. And it's, it's out there in writing ahead of time. Now, yes, we're trading in real life. And once in a while, something comes up kind of quick. And sometimes I almost feel like I have to apologize for G. I only had 10 seconds notice on that. But for the most part, things are out there, right? And that's, I think, an important thing to understand. Because it does you no good to be following a room if you can't follow it. So, I, and, and again, I don't want this to be a little sales thing, but I just want it as a real helpful idea. The watch list is provided to you at 9 o'clock in the morning, so you know what I'm going to be looking at. It's provided on Excel sheets. You can copy and paste in your platform if you want to follow along. Um, you're watching my charts the whole time. 
and the posts are all in writing ahead of time, blah, blah, blah. Um, January and February, January was a 21.9 hour month. So if you risk $300 of trade, you made 6,500. If you risk 500, you made $10,900. And that is gross. I'm not trying to blow any smoke here. It means you have to take out your commissions. You have to take out for the fact that maybe you got in late or had some slippage or whatever happened, but it doesn't add up to a ton. And the other thing people ask me is, and I, I started tracking this for because I, I had to do the math for people who asked me, and I started tracking it was, well, Paul, how much money do I need in an account to mimic what you're doing? That's a fair question. Every day is different. Some days you need as little as $18,000. Some days it's been as high as 70 something. But on average, it's been $41,000 for January because I actually have that on my little tracking sheet I give to the room. That's on average. Now, keep in mind, average is a deceptive thing because if you had 41,000, there'd be some days you, could, you couldn't participate. Ironically, though, what's funny is typically on the days that you need more money, <laughs> they're usually bad days because typically speaking, the good days have fewer trades. And I'm not saying a lot of trades makes a bad day. Sometimes good days have, but, but typically a bad day will have more, more trades, right? Two. Um, yes, over time, Jose, absolutely. Now, February was 21.5 months, 21.5 hour. So there's February. It's just, it was almost identical, blah, 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 38,000 needed typically. Now, now February, I'm having a tough time in February. I'm going to get it there. I'm going to get it close to there. I'm having a tough time for no reason. There's just no reason. I never blame anything. There's no reason to be blamed. There's nothing to blame. There's not the market. It's just I'm, I'm just, you know, kind of swinging and hitting foul balls. So um, I, I'm down a little bit in February, but it's, it's going to come back. And over time, yeah, I'm, I'm like, you know, every, every week, six and a half, something like that. Just, you know, just what it is. And that includes like getting things to the room. Not just me personally. It's harder to get stuff to the room than it is to trade yourself. But getting to the room, six plus. So that, that's January, February. Uh, that's January, February. March isn't closed yet. I'll let you know March when it closes. Um, I got some making up to do in March. Okay. Yeah, March. I'm sorry. Um, I, Steve, I don't know why, Stephen, I've been in calling this February for so often. I don't know why, but yeah, January, February done. Here's February stats. March, I am having a tougher time this month. I, since March 1st, I started off with a losing day March 1st. And ever since I've just been kind of just plus or minus an hour every day and I'm just not hitting it, but, um, it'll be there. So March we're in January and February. We're both like typical months, 21, 21 hour. And like I said, more importantly, and the, the, more importantly, followable is the important thing. And um, I, I don't think I tried for February, January. It was about five trades a day. Did I put that on here? January is about five trades a day. In February, it was a little more than I was 5.7 trades a day, which is, which is about one more than I want to be doing. I'm trading a little more than I want to. I'm not sure why. I, st I started um, back in September as the first full month, full month Jose. I, I don't have, I, I, I did, I, I have everything tracked. I didn't consolidate things um, for the end of last year. We had half of um, December was taken off for the holidays. We had some time off in um, for Thanksgiving. We had time off. I took three or four personal days as well. And I had... Um, for whatever reason, two of the worst weeks trading I'd had. If you throw those out, it was as long the same. If you include all those, and if you include all the holiday time, the average is about half of that, just being fair. It was about half of that, because a lot of time off, and I had a couple of bad weeks. But over a long period of time, that's what it is. So anyways, um, the point of this truly is, is, is don't, don't lose money. If you're on your own, and you're on your own, fine. Start off on paper. Start off with light risk amount. If you can be in a room that's doing well, be in a room, mimic it, and then develop your own style. That's what a lot of people are doing and have done um, over a period of time. And I think the people that uh, you know have done that have, have done very well. And I know a lot of people right now, they're in the room. They've been in the room for a long time. They don't necessarily take what I do tick for tick. They, they look at it, and they take what they like from what I do, and they take what they like from what they do. It's a great combination. I'm, you know, I'm very open, Jose. You know, it is what it is. Been doing this a long time. I'm good at it. You have your weeks sometimes. You know, everybody understands that. Um, but I want, I want to, I want to really try to be able to, to make it clear that you know, every month's going to be a 20-hour month. You know, uh, or better. Yeah, I get my work cut off for me for February, but we'll get it there. For March, for March, this is March. Anyways, guys. Um, 
I, I hope this was an interesting talk. I do them all a little different. The last talk I had was great technical concepts. By the way, that's recorded. You can go view it. So I talked a lot more about technical stuff. I did a little bit today, but not a whole lot. The one before that, there's, there's five or six on there that are recorded. Feel free to look at them. Uh, and the Trade of the Week videos and the educational videos. But I, and there's a few miscellaneous topics out there as well. Um, it's 6 o'clock. I want to let you guys go if you want to go. If you want to ask any questions about the prior slide, about um, some of the, the charting mistakes, which obviously I, I can't go over all of those um, time-wise, but if you want to hit one or two of those, I gladly take them. Or if you have questions about anything else, feel free. And uh, if you have any questions about things in general, you can kind of peruse the website. I think it's fairly well organized and fairly concise for what it is you need to do. Any questions on anything at all? Well, Larry, um, yeah, again, you're right. Options, I, I like the way you ask the questions because options are not a strategy. They're a way to handle the money, and options can be used. I, I don't recommend options for day trading, though, Larry, because um, unless you're on the most liquid of the liquid stocks, you're going to lose some of it in the options um, in and out because of being spreadier. You're also going to have an issue. Some of the trades I do may happen early in the morning. And if I go long a gap up or something like that, um, the option premium may be excessive and, and kill the trade for you. So I don't write, I, I, it is fine if you want to, there's, there's ways to mimic um, stocks by doing margin with deep in the money calls and that kind of stuff for longer term trading. Um, not that conducive though, for to, to me, for trying to do it for day trading. Um, I've, I've, I've kind of done it and I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, but that's, it's up to you. Thanks, Marty. Yes, Jose, this um, whole rec this whole thing is recorded and will be with the other um, recordings on the website on the free stuff page. OK. Uh, Gil, I use a 20 and a 40 and a 200 simple period moving averages. And I usually have all of those on at least one chart for the thumbnails. I usually leave off the 200 because it gets in the way of compressing the chart a little bit. And um, also, that's what I have up on there. But I, I think the more important question is, for what purpose do I use them? So feel free to ask that if you want. Right, yeah, options, right. You have to understand what you're doing with the options to some extent, yeah. OK. All right, see ya, HR. This is somewhat of a subject, but I've been meaning to ask you the question the last six months. A couple of, you mentioned the name of a person. Oh, um, Stephanie, are you talking about a book that I said is a must read book for traders? Like it would be my number one recommendation for a book above anything else? Yeah, that, that, I'm sure it's what you're talking about, because because when you say math, it wasn't a math book per se, but it kind of was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's called Trading Your Way to Financial Freedom by Van Tharp. Trading Your Way to Financial Freedom by Van Tharp. To me, that's a must read book. It talks about a lot of stuff I'm very hot on um, in terms of yeah, don't don't take anything from it in terms of strategy. He doesn't really talk about strategy. He talks about using a, a, a system which doesn't work, but. Um, everything else, I agree with 99% um, of what he says in there, and it's, it's a good read. I think it's a mandatory type read. Hey, Gil, for what purpose do I move moving averages? Moving averages, like any technical indicator you want to use, they're, they're not magic. They're not magical support. They're not. Uh, what they do is they give me a general guideline of where prices are in relation to where they've been, how fast they've been, if they're accelerating, how long they've been moving up. Um, comparing the 20 and the 40 to price, I can glance at those and have a real good idea of, of, of an objective way of looking at extension and even get a clue what's happening on other time frames by looking at those. So that's why I like them on the chart. But they do not represent magic. There's no such thing as a moving average crossover that works in any way, shape, or form. Um, I, again, not, not as actual causation. Uh, gracias, Paul. Tú tienes un, tienes esta, uh, tú tienes un toque dorado. No, no comprendo. ¿Qué es toque? Yo no comprendo toque. Paul, do you mention the 2040 
uh, weak estimated use to determine the trend change time by. Well, Jamie, it's a 20, 40, um, and 200 period moving average, meaning for any chart you're on, it's averaging 20 periods. So on a two minute chart, you're averaging 20 periods. On a weekly chart, you're averaging 20 weeks, whatever that is. Um, it is not to, to use trend change now. Uh, it does not signify trend change. It, it's just like, I think I answered my question maybe while you were typing that, but that, that's my answer that it, it gives me a good general concept of, of where prices are in terms of following a linear pattern, an accelerated pattern. Um, just overall extension is best viewed with a pair of moving averages that are following price. So it's just a guideline to be able to say, hey, is this thing getting a little out of control? Where is it? A golden touch. Boy, I should I should have known that. Oh, yeah, Toki. Dorado. Oh, yeah, Dorado, for crying out loud. Even eight-year-old kids know what Dorado is because it's the name of a movie. Gracias, Jose. Discipline strategist. What a cool name. A <laughs> consumer professional. Refreshing no time to come back. Well, thank you. Thank you, discipline <laughs> strategist. I, I love your name and I love your comment. Thank you very much. Yeah, El, that's what I said. El Dorado name. My kids even saw that for crying out loud. They're chasing gold something or other. Yo no sé que está mi problema. Sino que yo go, ya que va. Nada. Anyways, any other good questions, guys? Any? I think I got all the questions. Any other questions there? Remember Friday? We're going to do, you guys want technical Friday. I'm going to be doing more technical. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the market letter, which is actually talking about the market. So you're going to, um, and it's Friday at 2.30. But again, that's that invites only going to uh, members that day. So that's what I normally do. So, All right, guys. Um, anybody typing here? Going once? Going twice? Going three times. Thank you, guys. All right. Until next time, everybody, good trading.